lots of local talent about, you know. Is Seth on the piano, for instance. Yeah, there seems to be a new group formed in the sixth form every week. I'm sure one of them will be good to play. The Emmerdale Christmas Rave. Well, I hope that's not a serious suggestion. I don't think we should dismiss anything out of our love. Does she have to come here so early? She's got another cleaning job to fit in this morning and she doesn't like to let anyone down. Mm, well, she does have to be here for breakfast. Could we please, please not encourage her to start organising Christmas events? Oh, Betty's all right. Yeah, at least she has some lively ideas, which is more than I can say for some. Yes. Well, the committee is going to have to deal with her. You can talk to Frank about it over lunch. Uh, no, not the sort of thing I want to discuss in front of the hunt set. I don't know how you can sit down to a meal with those sort of people. Hunting's barbaric. It's part of country life. I'm thinking of riding out with the hunt myself. Well, then you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hey, hey, hey. Now, we give you kids a lot of freedom. Doesn't mean to say we want to be sniped at at every meal time, especially breakfast. Anyway, you're not so perfect yourselves. Instead of thinking about our thoughts, you ought to give a little bit more thought about what you're going to do with your lives. You wife, have not filled in your UCAS forms cowboy. yet. Thank you for tuning our way. Don't forget, we'll keep you in touch with the Well, I'm glad you've seen sense about that, anyway. Time, mm. I'm still going to take a year out. And the roadworks on the A58 have been causing... He wouldn't listen. I just couldn't get through to him at all. Well, we should have expected that. Every time you ask Chris to do something, it seems he uh, does the complete opposite. So what do I do? Back off, hope it all fizzes out before Cathy finds out? Don't have much choice. Unless you think we should tell her ourselves. No, I can't do that to Cathy. Mm. Maybe this other one I'll get bored with him, whoever she is. And he wouldn't tell you that either? I always hoped that I'd get closer to my kids as we got older. We seem to get further away. I can't get through to Chris, and I never know what Zoe's doing half the time. She's back this afternoon, and I expect she'll tell you all her news. And if she doesn't, there's no point fretting about it. You're supposed to be taking things easy. So just try and relax and concentrate on getting better. Yes, stop. Right, well, I think I've got everything organised for the lunch today. So you just sit back and enjoy a good meal and some pleasant conversation. Oh, with that hunt lot, I don't even speak the same language. That's why I invited Bernard and Ang Harrod. You can talk to them and I'll deal with the hunt crowd. You're welcome. Frank, you will be polite to them, won't you? They're useful for business here and at the stables. Yeah, I suppose I can take a few hours of hunting and shooting. I know it's just to relieve them of their money. Uh, Alan. Oh, morning, Bernard. Morning. Look, Alan, I want to arrange an emergency meeting of the committee. Now, what to do about Betty Eggleton? You've heard, then. I've heard practically nothing else for the last 24 hours. She seems to be using my bar as her election campaign office. Is she getting much support? Yes, quite a bit. Oh, I was afraid about that. Well, it's easy enough to have ideas if you don't have the responsibility of seeing them through. And some of my customers are only too happy for the excuse for a party, particularly if there's free drink on offer. It seems to me that whatever we do do at Christmas, it has to be an event of some dignity. Yes. But left to Betty Eggleton, it'll be a three-ring circus. Are you free this morning? Well, I will be when this delivery's in. Right, I'll ring Frank. That woman has got to be stopped. Found yourself a Christmas job yet? Uh, you? Nah, I don't need to. Be working full-time up at Heritage Farm as soon as term's up. What, are you giving up school for a dead-end job like that? You're crazy. What's dead-end about it? Let me car dry. I'll be managing that place in a few years. <sighs> Whatever happens, you'll still be a glorified red coat. Yeah, just as right. If you're not sure about university, you still need to keep your options open. Sorry for you two going on about options. That's because you're lucky enough to have them. Well, what's that supposed to mean? You moan about your parents, but they're always there to pick up the tab. If I went to college, I'd spend the rest of my life trying to pay back a student loan. While you're busy deciding whether or not to go to university, take a year out, the rest of us have got our lives to get on with. Is that you, Cathy? Expecting someone else. No, I just wondered where you were when I got up. I was like to marry Celeste. You don't tell me what you're up to, so why should I tell you? Oh, 
You don't have to and leave clues around like that. Enjoy the ride? Yes, very much, thank you. I gave Shadow some hay afterwards. It's nice to have breakfast with someone with better manners. Well, perhaps you can buy me a nose bag for Christmas. I could start practicing now. I wouldn't waste my money. I expect he's better over the jumps than me, too. Things don't seem to be going too well between you and Luke. I don't suppose he's too bothered about it. <sighs> Look, I don't usually defend Luke, but you could be wrong. He does care about you, you know. Yeah, until something better comes along. Look, whether he decides to go to university next autumn or the year after that, it won't be to get away from you. It's because it's what he's got to do to set up a career. Oh, of course. It's what he's been programmed to do from birth. <sighs> Sorry. You have your little rebellions, but you still end up doing what's expected of you. I don't think that's very fair. Whatever happens, you'll both get your grades, go to university, get into the right profession, and nothing is going to stand in the way of that. Yeah, well, it seems a pretty reasonable set of priorities to me. Stupid things like love, friendship, caring, they've got to take the place in the queue until the right time. No, it's not like that. No? When Luke was in trouble, he knew me and Biff would stand by him. Whatever it took, that's what friends are for. But by the time he's come off the conveyor belt as another young doctor, he probably won't even remember who we are. Why don't you give him a chance to prove you wrong? Because it always has to be on his, well, your parents' terms. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be a robot like you. What the hell's got into Dolores? I mean, she can't expect me to miss college just to please her. That's just how I feel about your Jess and my job. No, that's the trouble with women. You think you've gone where you want them and start trying to change your life. Hello? Hung up on me. We're quite capable of making any decisions that have to be made between us. All we really need is someone to make up the numbers. And quick. If we get left with Betty, we'll never get a word in edgeways. But there must be somebody more suitable. We're gonna have to make another short list. Who's got the first suggestion? Gentlemen, sorry to interrupt you. I was wondering if you'd mind if I put this notice up in the bar, Mr. Turner. Only I thought it was time people were asked what they wanted in their village this Christmas, or perhaps that's too democratic for you. I'm hoping I'll be on the committee in time to discuss with you all the ideas we get through this. Well, you don't want to be bothered about that, Betty. Um, with your wedding coming up, I'm sure you and Seth have got more important things to do. It hasn't stopped, Frank, has it? Mind you, you have just given me an idea. What sort of an idea? Well, seeing as we'll both be on the committee by then, why don't we have a joint wedding? What? Home Farm would be a much better place to hold a reception than our caravan. And it would mean the other committee members wouldn't have to choose which wedding to come to. Oh, better check with Kim, what she'll be wearing. I wouldn't want us to clash. Tell me she was joking, please. It's hard to tell with Betty. Oh, thanks a lot. I thought the situation couldn't get any worse. You've just proved me wrong. You going out this morning? It's all right. I don't want to know where you're going or who you're seeing. No, I was just going to have a quiet morning in. Good. Well, perhaps you can spare a few minutes to talk to your wife for a change. Or do I have to fix an appointment? Maybe I should ask Rachel. She's good with appointments, isn't she? Cathy, there is obviously something on your mind. So why don't you spit it out? I saw you and Rachel together at the fireworks party. Full marks for observation. You were kissing her at the time. Was I? Are you two having an affair? 
The answer to your question is yes. Can I get back to my computer? Now? Don't you dare treat me like that! Sorry, I thought you'd finished. I've hardly started. This marriage may not mean anything to you, but we're going to sort out what's to be done about it. I'm not going on like this anymore. I don't know why you're pretending to be so shocked. You were having your affair with Josh this time last year. The situation was totally different. Yeah, I suppose you're right. After all, my relationship with Rachel is based on more than just sex. <sighs> You'll never know how much I loved him. We planned to go away. But I gave all of that up to look after you. Well, there's no point being sore at me because you made a mistake. You begged me to stay, remember? Yeah, wish I hadn't. We wouldn't have had to pretend to make this sham of a marriage work. How can you throw back everything I've done for you in my face, Chris? You don't give a damn how much you've humiliated me. Anyone could have seen you and Rachel at that party. How do you think that makes me feel? Like you said, I don't give a damn. That's the difference between us, Kathy. You see, I don't care what other people think about me. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. You didn't stay in this marriage for me. You did it for you. You love all the sympathy you get from everyone. Saint Kathy, struggling to cope with that swine of a husband, Chris. I tell you what, maybe, just maybe you can get the committee to put up a plaque in your honour. <laughs> that can't be good for your image. I hate you. Yeah. But you'll be pleased to hear, unlike you, I won't have any qualms about leaving here when I'm ready. There's nothing to keep me here. <laughs> Nope. Bang on time. Kim's taken some of the others around to the stable. She's hoping to get a livery contract out of them. They'll be back in a minute. I have to go back to school this afternoon, so I must be gone by two. I hope nobody thinks I'm being rude. From what I remember of that hunt lot, they won't even notice. Other people are only there to fill in the gaps in their conversation. <laughs> I get the feeling you're not too fond of them, Frank. I'm pledged to be on my best behaviour and to steer clear of controversial subjects. <laughs> Might not be a bad idea if we did the same thing. The trouble is, I'm not sure what it's safe to talk about. No. Talking about a daughter who's virulently anti-blood sports, that might be a mistake. Uh, Frank, you know that Dan Harrod's very keen to join the hunt. Ah, then you should talk to Sir Tom. He's the new master of hounds. What's he like? He's just given up being a magistrate last time I saw him. I think he was disappointed he couldn't hang people for dropping litter. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard, hang Harrod. Glad you could make it. May I introduce Sir Thomas Weir, Bernard Angharad McAllister. Very pleased to meet you. How do you do? I'm sorry to hear about the ticker, old man. That's bad luck. Thanks. Getting better all the time. <coughs> Can't keep a good man down, eh? <laughs> Learning to count my blessings. After all, they shoot horses, don't they? <coughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> oh. Coming, Victoria. get hold of. What does Jack think to that? Oh, he's coming around to the idea slowly. I expect you heard about my trip to York. It was a talk of the village. Well, I'm back now. Permanently? I hope so. The fault, dear Rachel, lies not in our stars, but in ourselves. Cassius, Julius Caesar? Sarah Thugden, Emma Dale. <laughs> I reckon it's down to us to sort our own lives out. Well, you seem to be making a pretty good start. I'll keep my fingers crossed that the job offers start rolling in. Oh, I'm not kidding myself. It's going to be easy. But Jack's promised to do all he can to help, so I've got to give it a try. Look, Victoria needs some air, and I'd really like to get those letters sent off, so why don't you walk down to the post office with me and we can talk some more? Yeah, I'd like that. I've got something I'd like to talk to you about. 
You're the local medic, then? Guilty. Do you ride? No, no, I'm afraid not. I was quite impressed with your setup, Kim. I'm considering sending you a few horses. Oh, more the merrier. I had a couple stolen last year. I hope your security is good up there. The whole heritage farm is patrolled nightly by a local firm. One can't be too careful these days. It's a dreadful business that raid up at Lord Browdell's place, eh? A million quids with him. I just hope he's well insured. Well, some things money can't replace, like old Rasputin. Oh. Watch they took. I had him from a foal. There'll never be another like him. My wife's become very interested in riding since we've been up here. Well, I've just started, really, but I'm enjoying it. She's going to be an excellent rider. Do you hunt? Not yet, but I'd certainly like to try. Oh, splendid. We could do with some new subscribers. Membership done? We lost a lot when Kincaid was in charge. That fellow is a complete idiot. Yes, that's what I thought. Not a man to be trusted, either. Yes, you always were a good judge of horse flesh, Tate. Still, we're all well rid of him now. Yeah, here. Yeah. Well, I'm sure things will be much better now you're in charge. Well, I hope so. The only trouble now is these damn saboteurs. Uh, there are a lot of local feeling against the hunt. Not a jot. No, they're just the sort of people who protest about everything. Red to mob, you know, load of long-haired lefties in sandals. Personally, I'd shoot a lot of them. Well, that's a bit drastic, isn't it? Well, just my little joke, Doctor. No, you're not actually allowed to do that sort of thing in the realms of Her Britannic Majesty. They are a darn nuisance, though. So how do you cope with them? We've been changing the venue of the meet at the last minute, so the idiots turn up to the wrong place. Probably have to do it again for the next one. They seem to be getting wind of our plans. Then why don't you hold it here? The hunt hasn't met at Home Farm for far too long. Oh, what a splendid idea. Yes, thank you very much. Frank and I would be delighted to have you. Wouldn't we, Frank? <laughs> yeah. Great. Come on, Rachel. What did you really want to talk about? Something wrong? No, no, not really. I haven't been this happy for ages. I've been seeing someone. Wow, you're a dark horse. <laughs> so, what's he like, this new man of yours? I don't know where to start. That sounds intriguing. No, complicated. He's, he's married. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I know. Everyone in the village is going to say, there she goes again, just like with Pete Whiteley. But it's not like that. The marriage was over long before we got involved. I, I didn't ask for this to happen. I thought we'd just be friends. It's OK, Rachel, I believe you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're probably the only one that will. Well, maybe it'll work out for you this time. If the marriage really is dead, then there's nothing to stop him leaving his wife. Oh, it's not that simple. In fact, it's a real mess. When this gets out, I'm going to be the most hated woman in the village. Excuse me. Do you know where I can find Zoe Tate? Oh, well, if it's about a pet, I'm afraid the surgery's closed. No, it's not about animals. It's personal. Are you a friend of hers? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, then you want to go to Home Farm. Uh, that's where she lives. Well, perhaps you could give me directions. Well, if you go back out of the village, over the bridge, then you take the left fork. So, just how serious is this relationship? Well, it means an awful lot to me. I'm not going to give him up if that's what you're asking. How does he feel about it? The same, I think. It's funny, really. I never thought I even really liked him. I thought he was conceited, brash, uncaring. That's the impression he gives out, anyway. Do I know him? Yeah. It's Chris Tate. What? You think I'm crazy, don't you? Of all the men in the world, you have to go and pick Chris Tate. I didn't pick him, it just happened. Hell is going to break loose when this gets out. What did you invite the hands here for? That's about the last thing we need. I thought you'd be pleased. 
You and Sir Thomas seem to be getting on so well. Eh? At least when the subject of Neil Kincaid came up. I'm sorry. I just couldn't resist it. Yes, well, for your penance, you can be a good host when the hunt comes. Good for business, anyway. OK. Fashionably late. Who is she? Oh, I don't know. I thought you'd invite her. Perhaps she's going to the wrong party. I must be getting back to school now, but I want to thank you for a lovely lunch. Pleasure. I'm sorry, I didn't realise there was a party going on. I've come to see Zoe Tate. Well, I'm afraid she's not here at the moment. Was she expecting? Not really. I wanted it to be a surprise. Would it be all right if I wait? <laughs> I'm not sure how long she's going to be. I've come a very long way, and it's really very important I see her. I'm Zoe's dad. Is there anything I can do to help? No, I'm afraid it's something I can only discuss with her. I see. Well, look, uh, why don't you help yourself to food and drink while you're waiting? I don't want to impose. Bye, Frank. Thank Bye. you. Something wrong? Come to see Zoe. I told her I didn't know how long she was going to be, but she insisted on waiting. So? She needs to talk to her about something important and private. Sounds to me like she could be a close friend. You mean that sort of friend? I know they'll all blame me and side with Cathy, but they don't know what she's really like. Well, she has stuck by him. Well, she certainly doesn't love him anymore. She was going to leave him last year. What stopped her? Guilt. Take money. Oh, I don't expect him to believe me. I don't think I'll have many friends left in the village. I'll still be around, Rachel. You don't get rid of me that easily. Oh, thanks. All right, Rachel. Oh, yeah? What have you two been up to? Just girls' talk. Nothing you'd be interested in. I'll put the kettle on. Thanks ever so much for inviting us. We really did enjoy it. Yeah, our pleasure. Oh, by the way, Frank, I think I have had a brainwave about the Betty problem. You're not still worrying about that, are you? Uh, maybe you should be, too. She's planning a double wedding, you know? Her and Seth, you and me. What? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, I can't help you with that. But what I was thinking, what about Viv Windsor as a candidate for the committee? Viv? Well, I can't see her coming up with many ideas. Exactly. Just what we're looking for. You are a devious man, Doctor. <laughs> oh, hello, dear. Have I missed it all? Yeah, your timing was perfect. It was a great lunch. Thanks once again, eh? Bye. 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 There is one guest still here. She came calling for you in the sitting room. Mm. Well, I'll ask the caterers not to clear in here until later. Then you won't be disturbed. Just give me a shout if you need anything. 